Hey y'all, here's another lesson on the Mixolydian mode, what I kind of refer to as the Jerry Jam, kind of a Jerry Garcia, Grateful Dead sounding. It's a happy chord progression type of thing, happy scale, kind of a major scale, but it has that flat 7 note instead of the regular 7th note, and that's what gives it kind of a happy bluesy kind of vibe. Um, once again, the Mixolydian mode, this is going to be, it's actually in the key of D. But the chords we're playing are A and G. That's the 5 chord and the 4 chord in the key of D. So all the notes we're going to play in the A Mixolydian mode are all from the D major scale. But our tonal center is like A. It feels like we're in A, but we do have a flat 7. So I'm going to kind of show you um, in this lesson take that triad thing one step further where we can see all these notes of the A chord, we see all these notes of the G chord here on the third fret. But we're looking for like the triad shapes in here. Like this is the A triad, seventh fret, sixth and ninth. This is the G triad, five, four, and seven. So in these different little positions, I'm going to also start here um, a lot, seventh fret, D string, middle finger. This would be like the next octave of that scale. We want to start here on this big A. That's the first octave of it. And of course you could keep going in that same position. You can add that G in there too. But if we want to get up into the next higher octave, it sometimes makes sense to start here. And then we can finish off with some other notes in here. Go to the 12th if you want. So that's your A major again. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, and A. B, C sharp, D. So there's other things to look at too. Like here's an A note. And that's its third right there. You can also extend that to this triad. But this is the A in its third. This is G in its third. So when you see these little shapes moving around... See, this is part of that chord too. And you see this A down to G. And you see this A triad down to G triad. So I'm gonna put on some backing chords of the A and G and I'm gonna show you how I solo over this type of progression and how I'm able to keep track of which notes match the chord better at the time. So like for instance, let's look at this string right here. So we got fifth, seventh, and eighth. So let's see what notes like for A well, that note is in the A chord, so that's a good one. Um, as far as uh, the, this, wouldn't we wouldn't really do that. The G would make it like a seven chord, so we might not really play that. Whereas we would play like this note would match the A chord perfectly because it's a chord tone. Now, um, if we were on a G chord, the G note right there is in the G chord, so that one would work. Now, if we were down here on this bottom string, this fifth fret would work and this ninth fret would work because those are both in that A chord. You got kind of that shape there. Now, for the G, this note, this seventh fret, is in the G chord, part of that triad. So I'm going to play these chords and try to show you kind of how this works. Here goes the A chord. Now, that seventh fret is part of that G triad right there. Back to A. And here goes G, so I play a G note in its third. Down to that fifth part of the A chord. And that seven is part of the G triad. A. Both of those notes were part of the G triad. Look at these notes as part of a G chord and an A chord. So if you start to visualize the different shapes of those triads of those two chords, that can help you within the scale, like pinpoint the notes that would sound the best too, you know. There's A. There's G. There's the fifth of G. Fifth of A. part of A's triad. That's 
that's part of that A chord. So you can start to you see those shapes and you can start to make more informed decisions as opposed to just kind of noodling and not knowing what it's going to sound like. You do this enough and you know exactly what it's going to sound like when you hit some of these chord tone notes. So I'm going to have you guys, you guys just go ahead and jam. I'll stop this. I'm going to play these chords behind you here. Three, four. Okay, I want to show you a couple more scales and then we're going to do that again. So once again, this is that first position of the A mixolydian on 5th fret area. So down here we're going to have um, this, basically this is the third position of all the five positions. 2, 3, 5, 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 2, 3, 5, 2, 3, 5. Let's look at the open position. This is a cool one too. You can do like pull off stuff. Stuff like that. So we're gonna have open two, three, and there's your A. So that's basically our, our root note. O two three, O two four, O two four, O two, O two three, O two three. So let me show you, I'm gonna play a little bit of this and I'll show you how to work that low. That note is part of that A chord. Okay, so now you guys try. Three and four and. Okay, let's mix it up a little bit. Think about uh, reeling in the ears, Steely Dan. Starts on the G, goes to the A. So just you got you know you got to reverse now. So you got to think about those G notes, and then you think about the A notes. We still got the same overall scale. I'm gonna keep those chords going, G to A, three, four. Okay, here if we want to take that a step further, we can think about the Grateful Dead's Franklin's Tower. That's going to use the A and the G and be in that same mode, but it also has a D chord. So when it comes to that D chord, you have to look at the notes of the D chord, the triad of all that, so that you could hit proper notes to to sound like that chord when it happens. So it'd be like kind of three beats and then one beat on the G, three beats on the D, back to G. So here, here's your 
use your A notes. D. A. Little G. And then to a note from the D. So here goes those chords again. G to the D. All right, I hope this was helpful. Uh, like and subscribe if you dig it. And we'll see you soon. Thanks, I'm Damon. Peace out.